Good morning. Today is Monday, June 20th, and we are celebrating Juneteenth today, which is an event that ended the Civil War. Juneteenth is a blend of the words June and 19th, and it marks June 19th, 1865. That day, the Union Army Major General Gordon Granger rode into Galveston, Texas, and issued General Order Number 3, which proclaimed that enslaved Africans Americans there were free. The people of Texas, he said, are informed in accordance with the proclamation from the executive of the United States, the slaves are free. All slaves are free. This involves an absolute equality of personal rights and the rights of property between former masters and former slaves. And the connection now between slaves and masters is one of employer and one of hired labor. And the freedom for the enslaved people of Galveston, Texas, came two and a half years after President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, which couldn't be enforced in certain areas of the country while the Confederates still had control of them. But when the Confederate General Robert E. Lee surrendered to the Union Army at Appomattox Courthouse in Virginia, that signaled the end of the Civil War. Juneteenth was largely overlooked as a holiday for many people, and it was mainly overlooked by the non-black Americans until recent years. And it was the momentum of the Black Lives Matter movement that propelled Juneteenth into the national spotlight. And so this holiday was built upon decades-long push of activists and leaders to get recognition for this landmark occasion. Now, I have to admit, I never knew anything about Juneteenth. It was like it never existed. I don't know ever hearing anything about this particular day at all. While I was growing up and while we studied history, this never came up. And I don't know how many people in my generation who went to schools uh, in New York City ever heard of this particular day. Anyhow, it's the latest federal holiday in the U.S. And it's the first federal holiday approved since Martin Luther King Day was approved in 1983. So if my math is right, it's like 39 years between holidays. So Juneteenth is now a national holiday. And many public and private sector employees enjoy an extra day off from work. Or perhaps the companies are not willing to give an extra day off, so they'll swap Juneteenth for some other holiday that they had on the schedule. But there are over 30 states in the Union that are not recognizing Juneteenth as a holiday, a day off, and providing a day off for their public employees. And in these 30 states, they just haven't approved the funding to allow state employees to take a day off. The private sector people can do whatever they want to do on this national. You do not have to give people off just because it's a national holiday. You know, the other day in New Jersey, which has declared it a state holiday, but it wasn't in the contract for the transit workers union, so they pulled a sick out in protest for not having the day off. And that caused many, many people not to get to work on Friday. So this is not really a true national holiday yet. So this holiday has been on the books now for a full year, and there are 18 states that have done something about it, raised the money to give their employees a day off, etc. And the other states haven't figured out what to do. Now, it's very simple. If they can't afford to give this particular day off, then they can arrange, make an arrangement so you're flexible. So you can take off Juneteenth, but you can't take off some other holiday. You know, you you can make up a schedule that's going to accommodate everybody's needs, but they don't think that. You know, they've got a fixed schedule and they want to have all the holidays, but you can't have constant holidays. In the course of doing business, 
we ran into a situation with Washington's birthday. Our busiest time of the year in business was January through March. You know, those 90 days, it was very difficult to give anybody extra time off because we were very, very busy at that time of year. So we never had George Washington's birthday off or Lincoln's birthday off or anything like that. But we wait up for it in other days. We had a policy that an employee could take a day off to celebrate their birthday. So in the month of your birthday, you could take a day off. Now, if you were born in January, February, or March, you had to make another... You had to figure that out. We also provided three personal days. And the reason that we provided three personal days was because many of our Jewish employees would take off for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. So we gave personal days. We gave it to everybody. And the Jewish employees used it for the high holy days, and the other employees used it for whatever they wanted to use it for. So you can get it. There's ways to do these things, but as usual, the people in government are not as bright as they should be. They don't take time to think about things. So if you can't afford to give Juneteenth off, you have to do something else. If you want to people, or people want, they take a personal day or something like that, you make an extra day for something. You don't have to spend your time worrying about where you're going to get the money to give some people the day off. And I'm not so sure in those 30 states that that's really the issue. The issue there may be that they don't want to give any, give in to a holiday like Juneteenth. So it may be a form of discrimination in certain states. And that's just a guess on my part. I have no evidence to prove that, but that's the way I think. So in any event, I will leave you this morning with those ideas, and have a great day. Bye.